Hi students, myself S. S. Jagirdar sir. Uh, we are continuing the online classes in Engineering Mathematics semester four, module five. Already two lectures we have completed, and the third lecture, which is a continuation of previous lectures, is folding. So, dear students, last time we have discussed. what is the meaning of or what is the importance of the joint probability table the all the entries that we have entered what does they mean that also we have discuss today we are going to discuss some few more quantities few more quantities which are connected with the probability distribution joint probability distribution and those quantities are statistical in nature which will give more wide meaning or understanding of the joint probability distribution so let us begin with today's topic now today we are going to deal with two more distributions that is probability distributions one is marginal distributions of x and another is marginal distribution of y what does it mean so it is very simple you see in this table you see simply we have written it's not a definition it is an explanation of the topic what is marginal distribution here you can see the sum of j i j values along the row against x i is called as the f x i that is the symbol f x f of x i here in the table you can see x i is here and the values of j i j against it along the row are these 1 2 and up to n if you take up the sum of these values or instead of x i you can go for x1 some of the values against x1 some of the values against x2 and this way all the x values for them against them the row values if you add up then you will get the values those are called as the marginal distribution of x so those can be obtained in the table in this way suppose if you take up here if you extend this table here <coughs> if you extend this table here this one more column you will extend here and that column suppose i built up one more column i am going with and this is one more column and one more row i have added now if i add them this is the sum of all the gi's values along the row and these are given by the symbol f x i now if it is against the x1 it is f x1 if it is all the values added against x2 then this is symboled as f of x2 and this way it will be f of xi and this way the last value is f of x m so these values all these values with an additional column if you get added gi's values against all the values of the x those are called as the marginal distributions of x so there are m values therefore there are m marginal probability distribution values of the all values of x in the similar manner of course you can see this is the symbol and formula is what summation of all gi j values where j could take the value as 1 2 j y these all values j will take and those i will remain constant and therefore these all values together will be the marginal distribution of this next marginal distribution of y if you take up what is marginal distribution of y for that you have to take up the sum of j i j values along the column here along the row along the column against y j against y j these values if you add along the column all these values 
that gives here for example suppose if I extend this table and here I will take up the sum and this I will denote as j y g y j and this will be first g y 1 g y 2 and g y j g y n so this way these are the n values for n uh, marginal distribution values for n y values so this way the formula is summation of jij values where i will take here j will be constant i will take 1 2 m you can see here i will take j is constant i will take 1 2 i and m values so this way these two quantities are here extracted out of this table and here in the same table we have extended one column and one row and we have got this so now if you take up these two here one more important thing you can note what if you take up the sum of all the fxi values that means f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of xi plus f of xm then you will observe that its answer is 1 it will result into 1 that means when you add all the marginal distributions of x the result will be 1 and similarly if you take up the case of the g y j values that is g y 1 g y 2 and this way g y j and g y n this will also again you will find that this is also 1 that means when you add this this and all these values the result is 1 when you add all these values result is 1 it means what that this all will lead to one important thing that you can note here that this is nothing but when you add all these that means you are adding all these values together that means when you start adding all the values of the table jij values of the table they will result into one and this is what this will give you the idea that one of the condition for the probability that the sum of all the probability is always equal to one can be just verified by this fact so this is what we are going to take up so these are called as the marginal distribution of x and y because these values in the table are created in margin so therefore the name margin has come so these we can separately record marginal distribution of x is xi fxi and here you can see that it is x1 x2 these are the values of random variable x and their probabilities fx1 for x1 it is fx1 for x2 it is fx2 and this way it is fxi and this way it is last value is fxm so these two we can establish a table which is called as the marginal distribution of x table and similarly for y also all the y values you can list out here y j y1 y2 y1 y2 and y j and here it is last value is y n and the corresponding values are in the bottom in the bottom you can see that these are j y j values which are marginal probability distributions that is f y1 for y1 f y2 for y2 f sorry sorry it is g y2 g y g y1 g y2 and g y j and last value is g y n so this way these are the marginal distribution table you see in any numerical problems these two tables 
always you require for further calculations. So therefore, you must have a clear cut idea how these are obtained when joint probability table is given. Nothing has to be done. It is very simple. You go on adding all the row values. You will get the marginal, marginal distribution uh, values of the x. When you go on adding the column values, you will get the margin, marginal distribution values of the y. So this way, these two columns separately we can prepare. So this way, you can see that here, lastly, I will end up this with the fact that the important condition is established. What important condition is what? When sigma, sigma for i and j, f x i y j is equal to j i j is equal, sorry, sigma j i j is equal to 1 can easily be verified through the concept of mas, ma, marginal distribution of x and y. So, this way, this is the concept of the marginal distribution of the uh, x and y. Okay. Now, after this, we are going to take up another very important concept which is again very important for the exam where questions are based on this concept. What is that? So, this concept is the independent independent this concept is independent or stochastic or stochastic random variables. So, let us discuss what is meant by uh, independent random variables. In joint probability, two variables are there. They are said to be independent. Always they are not independent, but if they are independent, how will you come to know that they are independent? It is a very simple fact. So, this is exactly the definition for independent random variable. If you take probability of x being its value x and y its value being y that means all pair values. You can understand when we give different values to x and different value to y and pair them and get their probability. It means that you are considering all j, j i j values all possible j i j values which are listed in the table. So, if this result is equal to each result we are talking is equal to probability of x is equal to x into probability of y is equal to y. If the product of these two is equal to this, then the for every pair, how many pairs? Mn pairs we have discussed previously. For all the pairs, for each pair, if this is found to be true, then both the random variable x and y are said to be independent. Here, this can also be written as instead of this symbol, you can use f x y is equal to f of x into j of y. Here, these symbols we are using, you see fx is here, gy is here, so gy into fx. If this is equal to fxi, these are the fxi values, which another symbol we have given here, what jij, instead of this you can use jij symbol and if this is equal to fxi into gyj. For every pair, for every pair every possible pair of the random variables. If this is found, then the both the variables x and y are said to be independent. And conversely, if you take up converse of it, what is the converse of it? If, suppose, if any one pair out of mn pairs if any one pair does not give this result, that means for one pair, the product of these two is not equal to the jij value, fxi is equal to gyj is equal to, is not equal to jij, then the variables are said to be independent, they are not dependent, independent. So, whether the, if you want to prove that both the variables are independent, 
you require at least one pair you must identify out of m n pairs where this result is not found the product of fx into gy must not be equal to the value of them j i j so here if suppose if the random variables are independent in the table what you will find very easy you see this is fxi value column uh, and this is gy uh, values row now suppose if you start doing this way if you take up fx1 into gy1 will give you this result that means i will show here that if you multiply fx1 and gy1 both are available in the table fx1 gy1 or in the table fx1 and gy1 what you will get this is always equal to j11 this is j1 if you take up fx1 into gy2 only in case of independent random variable you will get j12 here fx1 yes fx1 is here into gy2 you will get j12 so this way all the value if fx1 fx values and gy values are available and random variables are independent all the jij values of the table can be obtained by multiplying respectively their pairs so this is exactly there so questions will be of two types one that you will be given these two and you will be informed that the variables are independent and you are asked to prepare the table at that time what you have to do you have to list out these margins first and go on multiplying this you take up fx1 multiply this fill up multiply this fill up multiply this fill up and first row you will get take second multiply fill up this way whole the table can be prepared if random variables are independent and suppose second question will come that means random variables are independent prepare the table if these are the marginal distribution values fx1 multiply all them one row you will get fx2 multiply all those. this is one type of question second question the the table will be given the joint probability table will be given and you are asked to prove that here in this case the x and y random variables are dependent not independent then what you have to do you go on working all the you have to verify all the values multiplication of these two equal to this if you found that fx1 fx gy1 is equal to j11 and in this if all the values you will verify in this if one value doesn't satisfy this requirement or doesn't approve this requirement that product of these two is equal to the jij value then the random variables are said to be not independent they are dependent so that means to disprove that they are independent or not independent if you want to disprove that they are uh, in, uh, independent then you have to go for one only one only value which should disprove it. so this way uh, this uh, concept of the independent variables can be can be understood and questions are asked on it please be careful about the concept now after this <coughs> you see there are so many things that we are going to do on these three tables these three tables are very important because all the questions are based on these three tables only now the next we are going to take up some important statistical important statistical important statistical quantities quantities and their formulae so this is next we are going to discuss there are so many quantities which we are interested to know or found out about the joint probability process if this table is given if this table is given these two tables can be prepared by the definition just we have seen 
I, if the, all these three tables we are having, then how to go for calculating these quantities? That is what I am going to discuss one by one. So, the first quantity that we are going to define and discuss is expectation of expectation of random variable x. So, expectation is nothing. It is just commonly it is a mean. Already your mathematical mean you have studied in statistics that mean x bar already we have discussed that the mean of uh, the frequencies uh, or distribution. But particularly when this mean is taken or considered for probability distribution then it is called as the expectation. The expectation is nothing but mean for probability distribution. So, therefore, what are the symbols and formulas? Please see here. The symbol for this is E of capital X or another very important symbol is mu X and the formula is sigma X i F X i. Now, to calculate the expectation of X, calculate the expectation of X this formula has to be obtained. What is the requirement just to work out this formula? This table is important. That means, marginal distribution of x, if you, it is available, easily you can do. How? You see, e is equal to here x i and f x i corresponding values. So, you have to take x 1 f x 1. I am expanding sigma x, x 1 f x 1 plus x1 into fx1, x2 into fx2, x2 into fx2 plus and so on xm into ff xm. So, if this way you correspondingly multiply these two quantities, all quantities and when you sum up, add them, you will get the value which is called as the expectation of x. So, this is how will you obtain using the marginal distribution of x. Now, next number 2, number 2 is expectation of random variable y. When expectation of random variable y is required, so what is the change? Here you will get expectation of y, this is the symbol that you will use and then mu of y and here instead of x y, you will take of y j and g y j and here you have to use this table. That is marginal distribution table of random variable y. And here, how will you expand the sigma? The sigma. So, y1 into g y1, yes, y1 into g y1 plus y2 into g y2, y2 into g y2 plus, and in this way, you can proceed to last y n into g y n. So, if corresponding product, if you take up and add them all, what you will get? Expectation of y. Expectation of y. So, these are the two important quantities you require in the problem. So, therefore, that is what we are taking. So, after this, the third, the third formula that you are going to take up, expectation of random variable x and y, both. For x, you require this table, for y, you require this table and formula is in similar manner where corresponding values of y with their corresponding marginal distribution values, you have to multiply and add. This is a very simple thing. Now, when you want x and y, both, then how to calculate? So, it is again the similar way, but this time you require the joint probability table. These two are not required, this is required. So, here how the symbol and formula are built up. See, the symbol for joint probability expectation of the x and y both is E of x y. You see, comma is not inserted here, no comma. E is equal to sigma, you have to take up x i and you have to take up y j and you have to take up j i j. You see, this is the summation of the product of these three. 
j i j you will get from this table x i values are here y j values are here and all j i j values are in the table in each block so that means how will you expand it how will you expand it it's very simple you see now first you take x1 y1 j y j11 x1 y1 j11 plus x1 y2 j12 x2 uh, sorry x1 y2 j12 and this way the end value is x1 yn and j1n x1 yn and j so this will be 1 and then plus the same you will repeat with x2 x2 y1 and j21 x2 y1 uh, x2 sorry x2 y1 and j21 and x2 y2 and j22 x2 y2 j22 this way all the values you will cover and the last value is x2 yn j 2 n x 2 y n j 2. So, this way you have to go on and lastly you will come to here what is this that is x m y 1 j m 1 see here x m y 1 j m n. So, this value this value this value all these three values you have to multiply and similarly you proceed further x m y 2 j m 2 and this lastly you will go to x m y n j m n x m y n j m n and when you take up these all sums this means this will give you expectation of x y that is x and y both so this these three so what you understood if you want expectation of x use this table if you want expectation of y use this table and if you want expectation of both x and y use the joint probability table. So, these are the three important quantities that we should calculate. Now, next we will go for <coughs> another quantity that is called as the variance that is called as the variance of x and variance of y. Let us begin the fourth quantity <coughs> variance variance of random variable x variance of random variable x now variance of random variable x what are the symbol you see capital V x or you can use this sigma this symbol of sigma x and this is variance is always square of this e is equal to now you see it is again the similar you have to take up sigma you have to take up sigma but this time x i but x i square you have to take up and f x i and minus mu x square this is the formula how this formula is calculated very simple you see in the bracket x i square means again you have to use this table x i values and f x i values are here instead of in, uh, initially you have taken x 1 into f of x 1, but now for variance x 1 square you have to take up x 1 square and you multiply with f x 1 plus x 2 square into f x 2 and this way the last value is x m square into f x m. So, this way this can be expanded the sigma can be expanded and minus of course mu x instead of mu x you can use this way this symbol also mu x square you use this or this because earlier in the first case we have how to calculate mu x we have discussed the same value you have to substitute here. So, in this way you will get the variance of uh, random variable x ok for variance of y suppose if you want y if you want y the symbols will change this way this will be y this is the fifth formula this will be y and here instead of x i it will be j j g j sorry 
it will be g j and this is g of g of y j and here it is not mu x it is mu y mu y already we have calculated previously now for this this table it is taken earlier you have multiplied y1 with g y1 y2 with g y2 but this time for variance y g j square you have to take up means this you have to sorry here we have made a mistake this is not g it is y sorry so if you take this so therefore now this sigma is expanded taking y1 now square that means you have to take up square of this and then you multiply this by g y1 plus y2 square and g y2 and this way the last value last value is what y n so y n square again and what is the probability g y here and all this is the expansion of this sigma and next minus expectation of y but it's square you have to take you can use this symbol or this symbol earlier how to calculate this we have discussed so this way variance of random variable y can be calculated so expectation of x expectation of y expectation of x and y then variance of x and variance of y these five formulas you have to work out on the basis of these tables only now next i will move to another very important quantity that is the <coughs> that is i think it is the fifth formula uh, no it is the sixth formula that is uh, standard deviation of x if you want stand devi in standard deviation of x the symbol is sd or it is sigma x here square will not come square means variance so therefore this is nothing but previously you have calculate vx if you take its square root you will get the standard deviation of the x this is very simple so standard deviation is nothing but square root of the variance a square root of the variance is standard deviation similarly you can go for the standard deviation of y so here you have to take up the standard deviation of y as the square root of variance of y so this way the standard deviations you can calculate because in our numerical formulas these are required for every calculation so therefore these calculations are done with the help of the variance first calculate variance then take the square root now <coughs> here we are going to discuss sometime of course this i will not take up seriously here because you will not understand just by symbols in examples we will discuss this so that is expectation of any function expectation of any function expectation of any function phi <coughs> x i y j of x and y this function is that of x and random variable x and y over probability over probability function f x i y j so that means if you want this expectation of this function phi x i y j how will you get it what is the formula the formula is very simple you see this is sigma and sigma i j all calculations you will take up this function every pair of this function with x x i value and y j values you will pick up from here one by one and corresponding j i j values you will take up when you take up exactly the multiplication of this then you will get the expectation of any function which is defined for x and y its expectation can be calculated by this formula okay i will in detail i will discuss when i discuss the examples so lastly there there are <coughs> still two important quantities of course in exam this will be our requirement or this will be required to found out that is what variance 
but here because variance we have discussed in case of x and y, but variance in case of x and y is termed as called as covariance. It is called as the covariance of x and y. Covariance of x and y. If you take a covariance of x and y, then what is the symbol and what is the formula? The symbol is capital C, capital O, capital V and that of x comma y. See here in expectation comma does not come, but in covariance comma has to be put e is equal to, yes formula is what? E is equal to expectation of x y, here comma does not come, here comma comes, already we have calculated expectation of x y minus mu of x mu of x is what expectation of only x into expectation of only y that means product of expectation of x and expectation of y when it is subtracted in the expectation of together x and y what quantity comes that is called as the covariance of x and y this is very important in all the examples uh, in uh, six mass examples on joint power table this is what is encoded in the table. So, use this formula using these tables, use this formula, calculate this, calculate this, calculate this and finally, you can calculate covariance of x and y. And finally, we have another quantity that is called as the <coughs> correlation. Correlation, this term has come in previous uh, topic, huh? previous uh, module 4, correlation correlation of x and y. So, correlation of x and y, the symbol is rho e is equal to, the formula is very simple, covariance you have calculated, that value you have to take up in the numerator and already you have calculated standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y. You divide the covariance by these two quantities, you will get this. So, this way these are the uh, quantities that we have to calculate and discuss whenever we discuss the joint probability uh, for two random variable x and y. So, in our uh, problems these are the things that will be inquired giving this table all these things we have to take up problems next in the next lecture we are going to discuss. Here lastly I want to mention one more thing that is. Uh, uh, you know these important outcomes. What are these? Uh, if x and y, if x and y are independent, if x and y are independent with random variables, you know how to verify they are random variable. We have discussed already. If they are random variable, then the important outcomes that you can directly take up is this. That is one, the expectation x y is always equal to the product of expectation of x into expectation of y or you can use these symbols also mu x into mu y. This one result for only it is true for only for independent random variables. The second outcome is covariance whenever you calculate for x and y. When x and y are independent random variable, its result is always 0. And last third and uh, the correlation of x and y is also 0. These are direct results you can uh, consider, but when, when both the random variables are independent. And for independent, what is the requirement? The product of the corresponding marginal distribution must be equal to the joint probability distribution in case of each pair. So, that we have discussed. So, this is exactly what we are going to take up. So, gentlemen, uh, here we have discussed uh, the theory part of uh, joint probability distribution in lecture 3. All the theory is covered and now next we have to go for lecture 4 in which the particular kind of examples we are